Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are gonna build a context focus assistant. Now, if you are a regular watcher to my content on my channel, you're gonna be thinking, hang on, have you not created something like that before? You would be absolutely right, because we have, but we use the DaVinci model, which I know is more expensive than the GPT 3.5 Turbo model. And I know you've been asking for it, and I think we've managed to crack away in order to keep our conversation on topic to a particular script. So the idea is you'll give it a script and it will try to remain on topic as you have that conversation. It's not perfect, but it will pretty well much get you to where you need to be. And I'll walk you through and I'll show you how that plays out. So in this particular video then, we're so we're gonna clone the existing project which I completed at the end of that five part mini series. Of course, if you are interested in, in actually building just a general chat GPT client where you can hold a conversation, please do go and have a look at that series. But I'm gonna give you the link to the example, the clone of the project that you can then use to get you to where you need to in this particular application modification. So we're gonna then modify the UI to make it more relatable to the topic. So we're gonna keep it as an IT support assistant just to give you a comparative with the previous video, but of course you can change that to whatever you would like. We're gonna enhance the custom function to include a system related message before each request. Now this is the key bit. By making that change to the application, you are gonna try and keep the conversation on topic with the chat GPT platform, okay? So I'll show you how to add that into the application. And we're also, going to, we're also going to adapt the UI to filter out these systems messages. So we're going to put these system messages in upon every single request, but we're not going to want to see those with inside the Flood of Flow UI. So I'll show you how to filter those out with inside this application as well. And of course, the, the system related message, there's the initial script that you're going to give the application. We're going to put it in the app states and then you can customize it how you like. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll turn it into something like a fashion design or something like that. And I'll show you the output that you would get by making that particular specific change. So of course, it's walkthrough time. So um, hopefully you can clone the project. The link is in the description, of course. So please do grab that. It gives you, it, it gets you to the right starting point that we need for our application. And then we're now going to work on making the changes. So uh, without further ado, let's get cracking. So before we start making changes to the UI, let's show you the example that we've currently got up and running. Now, of course, I've made some changes to it. It looks like an IT support desk at the moment. It's, it's, it's very similar to the application that was built inside the mini series, but I've just labeled up in a different kind of way. So let's ask it a question about the role. Please tell me your role. Let's hit the send option. Now we know that I've uh, already behind the scenes already told it what role that I would like it to play out. So you can see here that great, this is what I want to come back. It's telling me that it's a, an IT support technician, which is fantastic. So now let's ask a question. So I said, please help me with my motherboard, which appears to be overheating. So an IT question, let's hit the send and hopefully I'll get quite a, an exhaustive response come back with lots of different options. Excellent, so there we go, we've got a good response back now with lots of different options. Now what's really great about this version of the application is I can now ask it more about say number six. So tell me more about six. So there we go, so we've got a good response there which delves in a little bit deeper and of course I can keep having this conversation, keep delving deeper and deeper and deeper into the actual problem. So of course now let's now try taking it off topic and let's see what response we get. So please help with my maths homework. I'm kind of hoping it will put a bit of a barrier in place now. There we go, this is perfect. So I'm sorry, but as an IT technician, AI model, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, it's now at least coming back to me. Now, of course, if I was using the regular chat GPT service, it will say, yeah, sure, how can I help you? And, you know, please ask me more. So um, you can see there that we've got some barriers in place now. They're not the conclusive barriers. Of course, you can probably break this down by then now asking further questions, but at least it tries to remain on topic and that's really the best that we're going to get using this particular model at the time of recording. So now let's move into the uh, changes that we're going to now make to the application to get it to behave in exactly this way and let's move into Flutterflow right now. So using the link in the description, if you fire that link up with inside your account of Flutterflow and then actually click on the clone project that's just up there, you'll then be able to give the application a name and then you'll be right to where we need you to be to start making the changes. So if you go and do that now and we'll then be ready to go. 
So here we are then on the home screen of the project. So the first thing that we're going to do is create some application state. So just move over to the app state option here on the left hand side. Just hit that. And this is what you should have in your particular project. Now I'm just going to add a new state variable in and I'm just going to call this one initial script like that and just hit create. And then the default value that I'm just going to put in here, I'm just going to paste some content in here and you can put whatever you need to put in there. But I recommend that you follow something very, very similar to this. Otherwise, you might get diff different results. So you're an, an IT, uh, you're an experienced IT technician. Do not answer questions not related to the job of an IT technician. Make sure your responses are a numbered list or make sure responses are a numbered list so that's the script that you need to put in there um, of course if you want to use a different theme um, you can then replace IT technician with something else like fashion designer or something like that and just do that in both both places that's all that you should need to do on the app state so next up, you're going to want to put your API key in. So if you've got that platform API key that you should have, you just need to paste it in here because the cloned project doesn't come with an API key. So just paste that in there and then you should be good to go. That should be all the setup that you, you need to do. If you need to know how to get yourself your own API key, please go and have a look at the series that's linked to at the end of this video and also in the description, which will walk you through the build of this particular project. And there's also a bit in there about going off and grabbing, grabbing a key from the platform website. So that should be all that we need to do in the app state. And we should now be ready to make some of the UI changes now. Right, so I'm just back on the UI builder here. I'm just going to make some changes. I'm just going to change the text up here, AI support desk like that just change the content here help with your IT support issues of course you can change this to, to whatever you would like just change this down here what is your technical problem for example and then we just need to then make a change um, to here. But we can do that later where it says enter a chat message to begin. But pretty well much that gives you some element of look and feel to a support desk uh, chat app, uh, application. So next up, let's make a change in our custom functions. This is a really important part of the change that we need to make in the application. So just on the left hand side here, click custom functions. And then this is the one that we need to make a change to prepare chat history. So if you recall from the mini series, what this piece of code is doing is it's taking the chat history that's been built up, it's taking the message that we're putting in the prompt, and it's adding it to the chat history in the shape that chat GPT expects it. Now what we need to do is we need to add in something that happens just before the message that we actually put into that list and I'm just going to paste some code in here I'm just going to show what that looks like here let's just put that in here so of course we're going to come up with some errors for a second so we're just going to add the argument and what this is going to do this is going to take the initial script this is the app state variable that was just being created it's going to the content of that is going to be passed in as a as a specific role within inside the application we're going to say it's a system role not a user not our message as a system role and the content will be our initial script so what I now need to do is I now need to create an argument here so just on the right hand side let's type in initial script now this is going to be of type string it's not going to be nullable and we're just going to keep it as that so you can see here it's, it's the initial script is passed in and then add this before each message to focus the conversation response so we're now going to make a change in our action flow editor that will now use uh, we now pass in the initial script into this custom function. So just hit save and let's move over there now. Let's go back to the UI builder. Let's go down to the icon button. Let's go up to the actions and hit open. So now we need to make a change here. So it's this particular one that we need to make a change. So this is the one where we are now calling that custom function and we're now going to need to pass in this initial this this initial script. So just with that selected, go up to current conversation here. You can see we've got a nice big red board around this. It knows we've made a change. It knows we've got a problem. So just hit the prepare chat history. Just scroll down in this particular list here and it's this new one initial script. Just choose the option here and then we're going to go into the app state and we're going to pull out the initial script that we created um, earlier on. So there we go. That's all passing. That's the only change that we need to make and that's that all set up for us. So hit close and then we're back to the, the UI builder. 
So we've got a couple of project errors up the top there. We've got this um, here. We just need to click on that. And the reason why we've got these errors is because we cloned this as a brand new project. Um, of course, we've made some code change as well. We now need to compile that code. So just click on the custom function here. Just let it do its thing. There we go. Just press on the little error up here. Just press that custom code there. And there we go. All of our everything we need is now green which is great so let's just go back to the ui builder and now we need to make a further change in fact i'll tell you what we'll do we'll actually fire up the application to this particular stage and i'll show you the problem that we're now going to solve so just move up to the test option here you notice here that we sometimes get this wait until custom code validation is completed before running the simple way to get rid of that is just pop back into the the actual custom code here and just make sure all of this kind of just com completes and uh, all the spinners are finished. I tend to just sort of go through here and just make sure everything there is all good. So you can see here that one's just compiling up there. There we go, that's all good. So we should just be able to go back now. We just, just go back up to run and it should, there we go, off it goes. Okay, so test mode is fired up. I've just put a question in here. Let's hit the send option. And straight away, you're gonna see the problem. So what you can see here is that you are an experienced IT technician. That is our initial script. Now it's of system type. It's not user type. It's not an assistant type. It's the system type. So we now need to filter that out from within inside our UI. There is some other problems that we need to resolve, but we'll come back to those in a second. But let's sort that one out first. So here we are then back on the widget tree. So on the left hand side, I'm going to choose a list view current here. This is our list of obviously, obviously our conversation. Let's move up here to this option here for generate dynamic children. And we're going to want to make a change to this one here, the current conversation. So just choose that. And then in the available options, I need you to choose a filter list items. And then here on the filter condition, we are going to move down here and we are going to choose a code expression. So we're going to use a code expression to uh, find our system um, sort of uh, message and we're just going to just exclude it from our list okay so click on add argument in the var let's just say role okay and we're going to move down here to value here and we're going to say the item in list and we're just going to change this to json path and the uh, the actual json path to the role is just um, the dollar dot row so we're at the root of the uh, of the specific row with inside the response that comes back from chat gpt and it's the role that we're looking for okay so we're just going to hit confirm and then just scroll down here and we're just going to choose this and we're going to say role is not equal to and um, in double quotes system okay so that's how we are going to filter out i just need to say check for errors that should come back green i can't see any issues with that and that is looking good. So we just hit confirm. And that is simply all that we now need to do. So if I now go into the um, the, the run mode now, let's have a look and see if we've got that filtered out. We know we've still got some problems, but let's just see if we've got it filtered out. So here we go. Let's give this a go then. I've typed in what is your role. Let's hit the send option. And there we go, it's the first one that's up the top right. So it appears that we filtered out those system messages. Now we are getting null back as well. Now thinking about this, it might actually be that my API key is wrong. So if you're getting that, like I am, chances are it could be that you've got a problem coming back from the open API platform. So I'm just gonna go and create my API key and I'll come back and give it another go. So here we go, I've created my API key. Let's hit this again. What is your role? I'm hoping I'm gonna see a response back now from the system. It's feeling better because it's taken longer. Excellent. So that looks really, really positive. We're getting an IT related response back. So I think we are looking really, really good at this stage. So let's try another quick example. I've just gone back into the app state and I've just updated the initial script to say you're an experienced fashion designer this time. And I'm also going to remove this bit off here. Make sure responses are of are a numbered list. Now, you don't actually need that. Um, that's just me to try to get my responses to come back in a more, uh, more sort of bulleted form in the responses. I'm just going to take that out. Let's now try this now as a fashion designer. So here I'm just typing in what is your role. I don't obviously need to put this in there, but I'm just proving the case that, um, that it's going to come back as a fashion designer. There we go. Let's put another question in. So can you explain how I can patch up my jeans, which, which have a giant hole on the knees? Hit the send option there. Let's see what it comes back with. There we go. You've got some examples come back there. Let's now try to send it off the beaten track. So please help me build my house. 
There we go. As a fashion designer, my expertise is in clothing and accessory design. So we try to t send it off, off a different beaten path and um, it's pulled us back in now as a fashion designer. So this just goes to show here that you can chuck anything at it in the initial script, um, set its context and hopefully it will stay on track. Now, as I said before, it won't always do that, of course, but it does its best job at it um, in the example of this application. So uh, that's perfect. So there we go guys, hopefully you enjoyed this particular video and it was a little deviation of course from the full five part series that I created to actually build this application from scratch. Please do check out the link at the end of the video and of course the link is in the description as well to that full series. And of course a big thank you to the community as well because it's your conversation that I've been having that's kind of inspired the creation of this video to just try to help you guys out. I know you've been asking for it so I'm really glad to bring this particular video to you as well and please do like the video really do appreciate all your likes it makes such a big difference with getting the video content out there and spreading the word and of course please do subscribe to the channel as well if you love Flutterflow and you love no code in general there's so much more content on my channel and there's so much more to come in the future as well so it'd be great to have you as a subscriber so until the next one we'll see you real soon